Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unranged 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another save and load system. This one is going to be specifically for saving and loading your player stats, because again, this is another one which has been requested, just simply advancing upon previous ones I've done. However, you don't need to follow those, this can just be a standalone one which you watch. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you can see I have my health, stamina, and ammo on screen here, just as three different examples of what we can save and load, and I'm also going to be doing the stamina as well. So at the moment I just have different buttons to be decreasing my health and stamina but you can obviously do this however you want so obviously getting hit or running around or anything like that and also one for my ammo as well. So I'm just pressing 2, 4 and 6 to be decreasing these and when I press 1 it's going to save my game which you can obviously do in a different way as well so maybe on a save button when you go to the main menu or anything like that but for me it's just the one keyboard event. And then when I exit and go back in, it's going to load. So you see it's loaded all the way up here where we saved. Our health, stamina, and ammo have also changed. And what I can also do is increase these two. And then go down here, save again. And then go back in and you can see it's now updated with our position, health, stamina, and ammo like so. So this is what we're going to make today, a nice simple save and load system. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create our save game. And what a save game is, is it's a blueprint which allows us to store details and store variables, which we can then save and load off from as well. So I'm going to be doing this in my save games folder, which I have here. In here, I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, and then open this drop down menu of all classes. And in here, search for save game like so. Then I'm going to press the green select button and name this whatever you want. However, do not name it save game as that will confuse you later on as names will get confusing. So I'm just going to name this stats save like so, opening it up straight away. And again, I said this is just a place where we could store variables. So imagine it could kind of be like a notepad or a word document with the variable stored in it. So we just want to create our variables which we want to store in here. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here to create all the ones I want. And again, I want to have health, which I'm going to create as a float. I want stamina, which I also want as a float. I want ammo, which I want as an integer. And finally, last but not least, I also want location, which is going to be a vector. Or in actual fact, we can also do transform, so then we have the rotation of the player as well as the location if you wanted. And I'm going to compile and save that. Now we don't need to set up any default values in here, because again, we're going to overwrite these values to set them to be what they should be whenever we need to use them. So we're going to set these and then load them as well. So we can close that, as that is all we need to do in there. And this here is just the HUD which I'm using. Then we're going to open up our character blueprint, which for me is going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. Now in here you can see what I've already got is just simply on event begin play, I'm creating the widget and adding it to the screen. And this is also how I'm just increasing and decreasing my values just for testing and the purpose of the tutorial. Obviously for an actual game you want to have this set up differently. So we're going to ignore all that and what we're going to do is create two different functions, one for saving and one for loading. So let's start off with creating a function here for the save game. So that is what I'll name it, save game. And I'm going to come straight out of this function with a does save game exist? Because we want to know if we need to create a new save game or load it to then overwrite that save. So the slot name we can drag into our save game function there. So we can input a different slot name every time we want to save or load. That way it just makes it a little bit more efficient. Then after this, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch. So that was N, so B to get a branch with the return value going into the condition there, like so. Because again, this is going to be true if the save game does exist, or false if it doesn't. So we'll start with true if it does. If it does, we want to load it. So we're going to load game from slot, like so. And so the slot name wants to be this slot name here from the save game function. So we can just drag it in there. However, you see we get this line go through all the code, and we can use reroot nodes. However, what I'm going to do is drag out slot name and just search slot name. And what that does is because this is inside a function, we can use the inputs on the function in here like so, so we can get a reference to them like that. That's a nice little tip if you don't know that already. So for example, if I were to create a new input on here, just called tester with it being a boolean, you can see I have no other variable called tester, but inside this function, I can get tester like that. But if I were to be outside of this function, I won't be able to get tester because it just creates basically a local variable inside this function. So that was just going over that. Now what we need to do is out of the return value of load game from slot, we're going to right click, promote a variable, naming this save reference or save ref like so. 
such as so we can easily access this later on. Then we'll come off a of false of the branch. So if the save game doesn't exist, we need to create a new one. So that will simply be create save game object. Now the save game class is going to be the save game which we just created. So for me, that is the stats save like so. And you can see we have save game there already, which is why we don't name it save game, because again, that will confuse you there. And then the return value of this, we are also going to set the save reference like so. So we're setting it to whether we are loading or creating a new one like that. And then out of the bottom set save reference, we're going to cast to our stat save or just your save game, which we created at the start. And the execution will go into both of the set save ref like so. So you should have something which looks a little like this. And now this cast here is gonna allow us to access all of the different variables inside of our save game. So this is how we're gonna set them. So because I'm saving the game here, we want to set and override the variables already inside of the save game. So we're gonna come out of as stat save and set our different variables. So I'll start with set health like so. Now all we want to do for this health is just connect in the health variable we have inside of our actual player. So the health I'm connecting in here is the player's actual health which we want to save. As you saw, I dragged it in from my variables list on the left. Then I'll do as stat save again, set the stamina, with this again being the stamina which I want to save in the actual player blueprint, like so. And you're just gonna do this for every single stat which you want to save. So again, I have health, stamina, ammo, and location but just do it for all of the ones which you want in your game like so. It's a nice, easy, repetitive process like this. And the final one for me is set location, which is actually a transform because I decided I also want to have the player's rotation on there as well. So for this one, I don't actually have a variable for it because it's just the player's location. So I'm gonna come out of it and get actor transform like so. So it's gonna get the player's location, rotation, and scale, but obviously I'm just focusing on the location and rotation. So let's compile and save that. So now we have overrided the variables inside of the save game. However, we also need to save it. So what we've done at the moment is we've opened it and changed it, but now we need to save it. So very simply, we can come out of this at the end and save game to slot, like so, with the save game object being our save reference, which we have here, and the slot name being again, get slot name, like so. So nice and simple there. That is how we're going to be saving all of our stats for player and just saving the game. So we'll compile and save that. I'm going to close that function and back in my event graph, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how I want to save the game. So again, for me in this example, I just want to do the one keyboard event. So I'm going to right click and get a one keyboard event. Pressed is going to be call function save game like so. The slot name being the slot name which I want. So what I'm going to do is right click promote this to a variable, naming this slot name save, just so it's not a slot name because that might confuse us as well. Compile and change this default value, I'm just gonna name it slot one. You can name it absolutely whatever you like, just make sure it's the same in every reference which you're using. And just so I know that I've done it, I'm gonna put a print string here just for the development purposes, saying saved, like so. Compile and save, and that is now how we can save our game. And again, if you want to maybe do this in a pause menu, so when you're pressing save game or when you're pressing a button for quit, to access this, you can cast to your character blueprint and then as that character blueprint, for example, as third person character, you can call the function save game the same way I've just done here. And that will work the same way for you and just as well. So now we've got saving, let's also set up loading. So it's gonna be very similar. So we again need to create another function naming this load game like that. And this one is a little bit more simple. So again, I'm gonna start off the same way with a does save game exist, slot name going into the event start like that. Then hold add B, left click to get a branch with the condition going into the return value and the execution there like so. Then this time we only want to come out of true because we only want to load the game if the save game does exist. If it doesn't exist, then there's nothing to load. So we're only gonna come out of true and that's just with a simple load game from a slot like that. Slot name once again being get slot name like that. And as you'll also see there, we have the default of get slot name save and underneath that just get slot name. So this one is the variable inside the player blueprint and this one is the variable inside the function. So that's the difference there. You can see in the bottom here, we have local variables in the load game function.
and in here we're going to come out of the return value with a simple cast to our save game which for me is the stat save and as stat save what we're going to do now is instead of setting the variables we're going to get the variables so as stat save i'm going to get health like that and now we're going to set the health in the player blueprint so get health from the character variables list set it and i'm going to, go to set it to the value from the save object now we're going to do the same for all of them so get stamina as well and again just do this for all of the ones which you have the same way we did for saving just now with getting instead of setting now finally last but not least i've once again got the location so this is going to be again be slightly different because we're not setting a variable this time what we're going to do is actually set the actor transform like that and that is all we need to do that has now loaded the game as well so we've got to save and we've got to load so we compile and save so again, what we're doing now is accessing that save game, retrieving the variables and the values inside of it, and setting our variables to be the same as the one in the save game. So we'll close that, and now we just need to load the game when we start it. So I'm going to come off of the event begin play here with a simple call function, load game, simple like that. Slot name again going to be our slot name save variable, which we made earlier. And I'm also going to do a print string of loaded. Now this is going to print off every time we start the game just because it's on event begin play but again it's just something the developer sees just to make sure it is firing off so we'll compile save hit play and test this out so you can see we've now spawned here perfectly with the health stamina and ammo all to the max values because i haven't actually created a save game already so now if again if i press these different buttons i have to lower and increase the health stamina and ammo you see all of these values are going down and if I were to walk over here as well and also change my rotation and location, press 1, it says saved. If I come out and go back in, the health, stamina, ammo and location rotation are all the same as to when we last saved the game. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We set up a save game system in which we can change our player stats or any variables which we want. And then we can save and load this if I hit save now and then load it again when I press play, you can see all of them are the same as when I last saved, like so. And again, if I don't save, it's not gonna change. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.